You're listening to WCAT Radio, your home for authentic Catholic programming. Good evening to everyone out there listening to WCATradio.com. My name is Robert Madrigal, the host of this show, Know Your Faith, a forum for those who know the faith, a source for those who would like to get to know the faith, a.k.a. Unapologetically Apologetics. On this show, we talk about Catholic apologetics, and we are unapologetic about our love for God, our love for Christ, and our love for the Catholic Church. The topic for today's show is Misunderstood Catholic Doctrines. And this is part one of a two-part series on why we confess our sins to a priest. And there are many misunderstandings about confession to a priest, and some of them are that confession to a priest is an invention of the Catholic Church. Number two, confession to a priest is not in the Bible. And number three, we shouldn't confess our sins to a man. We should go directly to God. If someone goes by the Bible and the Bible alone, then there shouldn't be one argument against what we're going to talk about in today's show. Yet, I have run into many. I am going to give you a good Bible-based argument for confession to a priest. Some of this stuff, I feel, hasn't been discussed by other apologists. So please um, listen to the show, and you might agree. But we look into the Bible for the sake of our Bible-believing brothers and sisters. I always say that Catholic doctrine and practices aren't based on the Bible. They were around from before the Bible. We could just base a good argument for them on the Bible. And part two of this series will be a good catechism. And we will focus on what we should know as Catholics to learn more about our faith. It's not uh, so much an apologia based on the Bible. And that's part two. So let's go ahead and dive right in, and we will start with a prayer. As we, get, as we begin our prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, we come to you in great thanksgiving today for this opportunity to come together as brothers and sisters in Christ, so that we may learn more about our faith for the sake of defending the faith. We ask that you grant us the strength to explain and defend our faith with patience, and charity, and to see all challenges to our faith as a chance to evangelize and to spread the love and peace of Christ to all whom we meet, and to do this through the example of self-sacrifice that Christ provides for us through his death on the cross. We ask this in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. And we'll end our prayer in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> so why do Catholics confess their sins to a priest? Today we're going to talk about three major points. Number one, we're going to show that confession to a man, namely a priest, is in the Bible, and therefore the practice of confession to a priest is not a 20th century invention of the Catholic Church. Number two, Jesus did pass his authority to forgive sins on to his apostles. And one thing I want to point out is that is the key word here, authority to forgive sin to his apostles. And number three, Jesus practiced the forgiveness of sins while here on earth in his human nature, showing that man is called to take part in the forgiveness of sin something which Catholics practice and believe and Protestants reject to. So, let's start with the mistaken belief that confession to a priest is not in the Bible. And I am always amazed when I hear a Bible-believing Christian say that it's not. I mean, whenever I get into into a debate, it's always with someone who's saying, Bible, 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 read the Bible, and then... They have no idea of what I'm about to read from the Bible today on this show. So, let's start with a look at the book of Leviticus from way back when Moses 
authored the first five books of the Bible and what the Jews call the law in the prophetic words of Moses, as read in the book of Leviticus, chapter 5, verses 5 through 6. And it shall be, when he shall be guilty of one of these things, that he shall confess that he has sinned in that thing, and he shall bring his trespass offering to the Lord for the sin which he has sinned. And the priest shall make atonement for him concerning his sin. Now, <clears throat> I can't see anything being clearer than that. Number one, the sinner is confessing the sin to the priest. And number two, the priest makes atonement for the sinner. An exact match of Catholic practice or the Catholic practice of confession. And even though I base that argument on Scripture, I have had many Bible Christians state the objection that these verses are from the Old Testament. And with the birth of Christ, all that was changed. So because of this objection, I always keep two points firmly in mind. Firstly, these verses demonstrate the fact that confession to a sin is in the Bible. That point is clear. After that, they can object to the interpretation. They could object to how they interpret it. Or, like I said, it's from the Old Testament, but the fact of the matter is that these verses demonstrate that confession to a priest is in the Bible. And secondly, they prove that confession to a priest is not just a 20th century invention of the Catholic Church. This is the image of confession that a lot of people, not just Protestants, but even atheists have in mind. And this is another thing that Protestants have in common with atheists. Any objection after that cannot change those two facts. And I would like to state that clear because a well-timed objection can throw the argument or your concentration off balance, off balance, excuse me. And it often affects, at least it affects my focus. The subject usually has a tendency to change and the original point often gets lost. So when someone objects any objection or if someone states any objection, excuse me, I always make sure that I state plain and clear, wait a minute, you said that it's not in the Bible. And always remember, the practice of confession to a priest is man taking part in the, forgiveness, in the forgiveness of sin. And here, yet again, a Catholic practice that Bible Christians object to, even though it's found in the Bible. And I have to say, the arguments never cease to amaze. <clears throat> I'm always amazed when I get arguments against what it says in the Bible. Which brings me to my next point. Jesus did pass his authority to forgive sin onto his apostles. And the reason why I say that the word authority is so important is because Jesus gave his apostles authority to forgive sin and the power to forgive sin belongs to God and God alone. That's what Christians believe. But the authority to forgive sin was given to man and that's what Catholics believe. <clears throat> And as we read earlier in the book of Leviticus, the authority to forgive sin was given to man by the prophets of the Old Testament. We are about to read verses from the New Testament which will show that the same authority was given to the apostles by Christ himself. Let's look at the Gospel of John, chapter 20, Verses 21 through 23, as Jesus said to his apostles, Peace be with you, as my Father sent me, so I am sending you. And when he said this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whosoever sins you forgive will be forgiven. Whosoever sins you retain will be retained. Now, <clears throat> After reading that, I'd like to point out that these are the words of Christ. And I only point this out because 
I have recently had a Bible Christian claim that Jesus did not give the apostles the power to forgive and retain sin. And I have to say, I was really in awe. Number one, because this is a Bible Christian arguing over what it says in the Bible. <clears throat> and number two, this is a Bible Christian arguing over what Jesus said. Jesus' own words as written in the Bible. Now, I would submit to you that the reason why Jesus gave his apostles authority to forgive and retain sin is so that the apostles themselves would carry on with his work here on earth after his death. And that is the Catholic view on the matter. Which brings me to my third and final point. Not only did Jesus give the authority to forgive sin to his apostles, I would also offer that Jesus practiced the forgiveness of sin while here on earth in his human capacity. Now, just for a bit of context on that statement, the Catholic Church teaches that Jesus had two natures, human and divine. Now, I don't want to delve too deep on that point because that is a subject for an entirely different show and it would take much too long. It's probably good for a series of three or four shows. But <clears throat> I can say that it would be a theological fallacy to believe that Jesus was only half human and only half divine. That would make Jesus closer in nature to Hercules, and the Father would be closer in nature to Zeus. Now, with that in mind, I would like to show that according to the Bible, Jesus practiced the forgiveness of sin in his human capacity and through his human nature. And what this means is this is divine power practiced through his human nature. Now I'm sure that this might confuse the average Catholic, and any Bible-believing Christian would certainly call me a heretic and a false teacher. But keep in mind, Jesus, as written and as read in the Bible, often referred to himself as the Son of Man. So firstly, Jesus forgave sins while here on earth. And we have two examples of such. The first being the woman who anointed his feet, as mentioned in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 7, verse 48. And second, the woman caught in adultery, according to the Gospel of John, chapter 8, verse 1. Well, I'm sorry, verses 1 through 11. And this shows that Jesus forgave sins here on earth. But also, <clears throat> we have to read on, and read the words of Christ himself when referring to himself. We must ask the question, did he forgive sin in his divine power or in his human capacity, in his human nature? In the words of Christ himself, as read in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 9, verse 6, but that you know the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sin. The Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sin. Here again, for the third time on this show, I can't see anything stated any clearer than that. This is another example of when Jesus spoke, he made clear and concise statements. Here again, if someone argues against this, they're not arguing against the Catholic apologist. They're arguing against not only the Bible, but the words of Christ, as mentioned in the Bible. So let's go ahead and review what we have here. Some of the major points of confession as practiced by the Catholic Church. Number one, confession to a man, namely a priest, is in the Bible. And therefore, the practice of confession to a priest is not a 20th century invention of the Catholic Church. Number two, Jesus did pass his authority to forgive sin on to his apostles. And number three, Jesus practiced the forgiveness of sins while here on earth in his human nature, showing that man is called to take part in the forgiveness of sin. Well, that's all we have for tonight's show. 
So I have to say goodbye to everyone out there listening to WCATradio.com. Please join us once again in, for our next show, and we'll talk about the Catholic. I'm sorry, we'll, we'll have the second part of this series on confession to a priest. And for that show, we're not going to um, look at the Bible. We're going to be talking to Catholics who want to learn more about the faith for the sake of learning about the faith. And um, that would be a good catechism that we're going to present for our next show on confession. I'm looking forward to spending this time with everyone out there who are interested in listening to what I have to say and to hear from you as well. Please email me at madrigal.robert at ymail.com or you can contact me through the website wcatradio.com and please feel free to send me any questions and in, even more importantly comments because if I've said something wrong um, I'll either correct myself or admit that I'm wrong. I'm the first to admit that I'm wrong. And I would like to ask everyone out there to pray for fallen Catholics to return to the church so that they may take part in confession which is a very important part of forgiveness. But for now, let's end the show the right way, and that would be with a prayer. We'll begin our prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, we come to you in great thanksgiving today for this opportunity to come together as brothers and sisters in Christ, so that we may learn more about our faith for the sake of defending the faith. We ask that you grant us the strength to explain and defend our faith with patience and charity and to see challenges to our faith as a chance to evangelize and to spread the love and peace of Christ to all whom we meet. And to do this through the example of self-sacrifice that Christ provides for us through his death on the cross. We ask this in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. We'll end our prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So until the next show, may God bless you and... Um, Keep you in everything that you do. Goodbye and God bless. Hello, God's beloved. I'm Annabelle Mosley, author, professor of theology, and host of Then Sings My Soul and Destination Sainthood on WCAT Radio. I invite you to listen in and find inspiration along this sacred journey we're traveling together to make our lives a masterpiece and, with God's grace, become saints. Join me, Annabelle Mosley, for Then Sings My Soul and Destination Sainthood on WCAT Radio. God bless you. Remember, you're never alone. God is always with you. Thank you for listening to a production of WCAT Radio. Please join us in our mission of evangelization. And don't forget, love lifts up when knowledge takes flight.